uh, but can I request Dr. DeBroy to stay back and sir, if you can. Uh, in fact, uh, to the most important part of the day, from my point of view, from my, my career point of view as well, uh, as an academic, it is the release of the cover of my book uh, called The Age of Awakening. Uh, this is a book which we, it's actually on the economic history of India. It covers uh, the span of time from 1947 until May of 2018. Uh, in fact, I would like to invite my co-author, uh, Chirag, to come up on stage, please. Chirag, <laughs> if you can join us here. Uh, so uh, don't look at his size, his unassuming nature. He's an, an amazing, brilliant person uh, that I've actually uh, known for the last few years. We ended up doing this book. Uh, in fact, uh, can I also request uh, Lohit to come up on stage? Uh, in fact, uh, Lohit is my editor uh, from Penguin. Uh, he's my commissioning editor, and uh, this book actually happened because of Lohit. Uh, quite interestingly, uh, I sent him a proposal for a book uh, on competitiveness. Uh, and we said, okay, let me write something. And Lohit said, like, I sent him the first chapter, and Lohit said, Amit, this is not done. Your first chapter is a book in itself. And that is how the history book actually came about. And the next one is actually on competitiveness, which I'm actually fortunate enough to write with Dr. DeBroy now, uh, which is going to be out in July. Uh, so that is where it is. So Lohit, thanks for being there. Thanks for really pushing me into that direction and things. Uh, and then, of course, can I request MK to join us? Uh, as I said, I've dedicated the book to MK uh, for many interesting reasons. MK, thanks a lot for being there. Thank you. So, uh, so uh, this is where it is. Can I? So this is the cover. In fact, we'll distribute a pamphlet to all of you uh, right now. It should be on your tables. I'll request to actually bulk order. This should be the gift for the year or the New Year gift for all enterprises you here. Please pick up 500 copies each. Give it to your friends. This is one hell of a read, I can tell you. It's, uh, in fact, in words of many, in many ways, Lohit is going to say a few things about this. So can I request everyone? So Dr. Debroy, uh, who has done the foreword for this book, in fact, he was the first person to read the manuscript, I must admit. Uh, in fact, uh, quite interestingly, when I did the first chapter, he said, Amit, I just don't like the narrative. And that is where we actually ran a narrative which is more conversational. We really got it right for the mass audience. And this is what then Dr. Debroy was the inspiration for that. And Dr. Debroy, thanks a lot for doing the foreword for us. I think it couldn't have happened without uh, your help. Sir. Thank you. Uh, I never got to ask Amit why it is called the Age of Awakening. I can guess because, unless I'm wrong, this is a reference or an allusion to the Tryst with Destiny speech when the world sleeps. It's probably an allusion to that. And it's a narrative of the course of the Indian economy since independence, the successes, the failures, the promises, the potential, what needs to be done to get India moving. It's written in a very interesting way, or the version I read, I don't know about the version that is being published. <laughs> the version I read is written in a very, very interesting way, which makes it different. Because on this same topic, there are any number of tomes. And this is not a tome. And this is not dry and boring. It's written in a very engaging style. So I recommend that you buy it and read it. I recommend, Amit, you give me a copy so I don't have to buy it. Thank you. <laughs> So uh, you, you get multiple copies, so you can. Uh, so that's where it is. Uh, in fact, you have been an inspiration in many ways. Uh, in fact, uh, Chirag, if you would like to say something on this, like uh, it's been a great uh, pleasure and an honor to uh, collaborate with this young man, uh, just about uh, 24, uh, and a published author with uh, Penguin. So that that's where it is. In fact, uh, it could not have happened without his uh, hard work as well. Chirag, thanks a lot for being there. Thank you. Thank you. Just. Uh, I would actually uh, like to begin by thanking uh, Dr. Debroy and uh, Lohit here. They have been, throughout the writing process, they have been immense help in my uh, uh, writing and like uh, giving me critical feedback. Uh, so uh, I'd like to tell you about the uh, idea behind the book. Uh, when uh, uh, Amit sir and I were uh, 
writing a totally different project last year, like you said, uh, we we happened to uh, write a 10,000 worded essay on the state of the economy as such. And uh, through the in the process, we found uh, that there's no really engaging account on the uh, story of the Indian economy. I mean, uh, we are currently among the 40 largest nations uh, in the world. We are the uh, poorest in terms of per capita income. So there must be a story behind it. And uh, everybody knows like how we began. We began with a socialistic model, but uh, why did we choose it? It was not just, you know, uh, as is popularly alluded to, uh, just Nehru. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, I don't know how many guys, of you guys know this, but the Bombay plan, the famous Bombay plan, which was uh, uh, brought together by uh, Jamshedji Tata and uh, Birla at that time, uh, in the early 40s, it in fact the plan suggested that the st the state pl should play a considerable role in uh, 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 bringing about development, and the central planning should be the focus point of uh, uh, in the Indian economy. So that was coming from the business community itself. So the sense at the time was that uh, planning and socialism was to be the model that has to be ad adopted, and those are the kind of uh, intricacies that the uh, gender reader might not be aware of. Uh, so, uh, the, uh, like, the second biggest thing that happened in the uh, economy was the Green Revolution. And uh, e even in that, uh, how that came out to be, what was the story behind it, uh, there, was this, uh, there was this point when India criticized Vietnam, uh, uh, sorry, India criticized uh, America's actions in Vietnam. And Lyndon Johnson, the president at the time, uh, got annoyed with uh, Indira Gandhi's comments. And he stopped sending uh, food aid to India. India, at that point, literally lived from ship to mouth. So uh, there was this point in 1966 when uh, Indira Gandhi called up Johnson personally. And uh, after the conversation, she angrily kept on the phone and uh, called the food minister at the time, Subramanyam, and told him that uh, I do not want to beg for food again. And then she pushed him to, to bring about the Green Revolution in India. So there are these lot of uh, interesting stories that went behind uh, bringing the economy to where we are today. And that was the point. That was the idea behind the book. We wanted to uh, get you the story of the Indian economy from the perspective of men and the women who built it. Uh, so that is what we tried. Uh, we hope you'll like our version of it. Thanks a lot. Thank, thanks, Chirag. So uh, I, I think as Chirag is saying, like one fascinating read, uh, which is just going to be, uh, you, you can read it in one sitting. In fact, uh, that's where it is. In fact, uh, I've given it to people. They have read it in one sitting itself, and they find it to be a fascinating read. But more on that, can I request Lohit uh, to come up and share a few words on this? Uh, because he's been the commissioning editor. He's the reason for this uh, whole thing to happen in many ways. Uh, Thanks a lot, Lohit, for being there and being one of the finest commissioning editors I've actually worked with. Uh, in fact, uh, I don't mind publicly saying, if you're really looking at one of the finest hires in the country, he's the guy. <laughs> Thank you, Amit. Happy to be here. So this project started with a fundamental belief. And the fundamental belief was that our, economics, our economic story is actually fascinating. But most people, unfortunately, don't know what it is. And you know, I found that, especially with millennials, their India is very different to the earlier India. And while we often say it, we don't realize it how much the times have changed. So imagine you're in your 20s, pre or during 1980s in India. If you wanted to go buy a car, there were two options. You could buy an Ambassador or a Padmini. If you wanted to buy a brand new car, it, the waiting period took years. If you wanted to buy a Bajaj scooter, a brand new Bajaj scooter, in some cases, you would have to wait for a better part of a decade. The economy was growing at 3.5%, not 7 or 8%. If you wanted a phone connection, you either needed to know somebody important or you needed to bribe somebody. And in some cases, both. And there wasn't enough food. So if you, are, if you were rich and you had money, you would have to, you can go and buy Punjabi wheat, which was much better in quality. 
And if you were poor and you had less money, you would go buy dirty brown PS4 a TV. And look at India today, post-1991, how much it's changed. Every second, three people get new mobile connection today. Every minute, 20 Indians ride off on a brand new motorbike. Every hour, 200 passengers hit the road in a brand new car. From the days of ship to mouth to now, we have a food surplus of over 70 million tons. Goldman Sachs has projected India to be one of the top three economies of the world by 2050. And the question is, how many of us actually know this journey? And how many of us actually know our economic story? And it's a phenomenal story, it's fascinating. So The Age of Awakening actually tells that story. It's, it's an excellent book. It's a gripping read. I think Amit and Chirag have done a phenomenal job in it. I was, I was getting goosebumps when I was edit, editing the manuscript because I thought, how could a book on the economic story of India be this interesting? It's insightful, and as I said, it's extremely interesting. So we at Penguin Random House are very proud to publish it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, last but not the least, MK. Uh, a few words from you. Uh, I really want you to say something here today. I, I really did not know that you wanted to dedicate this, and I have no idea why would you do that. Uh, all I can say is that uh, this uh, is a subject that we are very, very, uh, it's very, very close to our heart too, because uh, we serve uh, the, the thinking, reading, uh, you know, news viewing uh, English viewer. And we have, uh, purely from a market and consumer point of view, we've seen a huge change in this group. And uh, we believe that uh, the Indians since independence, Indians who ran India, Indians who decided about India, uh, right up to uh, the first uh, decade of the century, in fact, right up to late 90s, uh, is what we call the passive optimists, people who uh, were happy, optimistic, uh, but wouldn't do anything about uh, what needs to be done. And when they f were faced with a the problem, they would usually come up with, sab uh, ho jayega. And this is uh, not other people, these are basically our parents, our elder brothers, uncles, cousins, most people, uh, I think, uh, I'm, I'm 50, anybody who's 55 plus, I think, have this mindset. I think people who started working after 1990 have this mindset. I mean, even five years older than us have this mindset, that things will be fine, somebody else is going to come and take care of it. That, that has changed into a very aggressive, probably the most aggressive a uh, bunch population in the world today, uh, I think, would be the top of the pyramid Indians. They are extremely uh, impatient, they are angry all the time, and they are seeking uh, that, uh, that action and violence on their screens, which is reflected in uh, the uh, very violent uh, debates that we sort of uh, uh, host. Uh, not just the debates, the the the, the screens uh, and the colors and the staccato cuts. And that is something that uh, is the change. And therefore, this awakening is, uh, is absolutely apt because these, these last 5 to 10 to 15 years, I mean, it's, it's different. I mean, you had rapes all over the you know, last seven decades. You never had the Nirbhaya uh, episode before 2012. I mean, you had... You never had, uh, you know, Indian multinational corporations of the type of, uh, uh, you know, TCS and uh, and and uh, Infosys uh, before that, and and you know, uh, Snapdeal and uh, uh, and Flipkart before that. Uh, you never had, uh, you know, a complete outsider come and become uh, the prime minister, uh, you know, before that. You never had a startup uh, political party before that, and that obviously is the age of awakening. And I'm sure. It is going to be gripping because, I mean, we, we can't, we don't tire ourselves uh, saying this story every night, so I'm sure it's, it's going to be as gripping as that, and you get uh, as good TRPs and ratings as we are able to. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks, All the thanks, best. MK. Uh, so, you know, like for a TRP, uh, I think what, what, should, uh, what MK should promise is that we'll do a one-hour talk show on this book, on the TV, and then the TRP happens, but then that's okay. Uh, I'm not forcing you into, onto that. <laughs> But MK, thanks a lot. So this is a great book that gives you the context of how decisions were made in this country. I think it's a, it gives you a real sense of what we are as a country and how we have really come to be. Huge positives, huge stories, the negative aspects, and why we took a certain set of decisions. I think a lot of us don't really understand it. So this would give you a sense of reality, realism to what we are. But thanks a lot for everybody to help do the honors.
Uh, thank you, Dr. De Bruyne. Thanks, Chiraj. Thanks, Lloyd. Thanks, MK. And can we have a group picture, please, here, uh, if possible? <laughs>